everyone, Graham Ehlers Sheldon here at NAB 2024. I'm a Sigma ambassador and I'm in the Atomos booth joined by JP from Atomos. Hey, JP. Hey, how you doing, Graham? I'm yeah. doing really well. Look, I'm trying to drink a lot of water. I'm staying hydrated. You know, day three of the show. Are you feeling all right? I'm feeling great. We're doing this. <laughs> yes, we're doing this. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Sigma FP camera and the Atomos camera to cloud system and how they play so well together. So maybe a good place to start would just be setting up the camera for C2C, camera to cloud for short. So Sigma FP, one of the world's smallest full frame mirrorless cameras, has a clean HDMI feed. How do I interact with the Atomos technology that you're holding? Yep, pretty simple. So we have the Sigma FP and we'll go HDMI out into the Atomos monitor here. Um, couple simple steps. You want to get an internet connection here on the monitor and you'll set up camera to cloud. Basically what we will be doing is we'll be doing 4K high res files on the camera and then a proxy file on the Ninja is going to be going to the cloud. You can also be dual recording here as well. So you can be doing a 4K ProRes HQ, LT, whatever flavor of DNX or ProRes here, and an H.265 proxy is going to be automatically uploaded to the cloud. So remote editors can access this on Frame.io, uh, Sony C Media. You could also be doing live streaming. There are a lot of options, JP, and I want to highlight the. So you have the Connect module attached to the back of an Ultra right now, and just to let folks at home know, what is a Connect module? Right. So the Connect module is. Um, it's going to give you Wi-Fi 6 antennas, we're going to have Bluetooth for, for audio, and also we will have SDI in. Now for the Sigma FP, we're fine with HDMI, but what we can do is HDMI in from the camera and SDI out. So that's a nice little feature as well. Um, but with those, with those additions, you're ready to be streaming from a Connect module. You could just use the Ninja as well to record, but for going to Camera Cloud, you have to have the module attached on the back. Now, I, I want to bounce back to something that you mentioned just a moment ago, and that is, you know, internet connectivity. So last year, I spent a little bit of time in sort of the inner island jungle area of the Hawaiian Islands, giving Camera to Cloud a test. And one of the things I, I was able to navigate in the field was the, you know, connectivity piece in terms of your internet connection. And that's not something that obviously Atomos or Sigma, that's not something we do. We're not internet providers. But I want to highlight that here because that's a question I get all the time. You could do a satellite-based connection. You could obviously do your Wi-Fi uh, at home or in a studio. Uh, and then, and you could also tether off your phone. I actually tried that on the way out to NAB last year and it worked fine. Yep. Any, any I'm missing? Yeah, no, you were using a, a Sclera device, I believe, on that shoot, but it worked all, all over Hawaii, right? It's dual bonded, it's 5G. Um, they also have a Starlink solution. But yes, you're right, you can also use the 5G from your phone as well to get these proxies up to the cloud. So you have options. Okay, so we have these proxies in the cloud. So JP, for the folks at home, um, how, you know, what should I do once my, my proxies are in the cloud? Why would I need to do that, for example? What's a use case? Yeah, so biggest use case is for fast turnarounds for socials. So once you have a proxy, Proxy into Frame.io or Sony C, you just download it, you have it on your phone, you could be going straight to Instagram, um, and like I said, this could be a 1080 or, an, or a 4K proxy. So, But you're retaining the, the metadata too from the Sigma FP, right? So that helps us relink in Premiere if we needed to? Yep, and you could be having LUTs and all that. And I also want to highlight just the general size of this system, right? So just holding that there, I mean, this is a couple of pounds all in. You know, we'd want to probably use like a cold shoe adapter to mount the monitor on there. But truly, this is one of the smallest, I would say, the most compact camera to cloud solutions that I've found out there. Would you agree with that? I would agree, yeah. I mean, this is all you need. You can go anywhere in the world with this, with the FP and the Atomos, and go camera to cloud, so. We're talking a lot about camera to cloud here as it relates to the Sigma FP, but I want to highlight that the Ninja Ultra, very formidable monitor in its own right. So, you know, you obviously have a good monitor on the back of the yeah. FP, but it doesn't swivel out. You guys solve a little bit of that, right? Right, yeah. I mean, even if you're not shooting camera to cloud, the Ninja Ultra is a great monitor. It has all your tools, right? Focus peaking, vector scopes. You have one-to-one -one zoom. You have all the cinema tools that you would expect. Um, and the dual recording, right? I mean, really, that's another function. Another function is you could just be recording on an SSD here, all flavors of ProRes, DNX, H.265, and being recording on the camera. So you have backups, right? You're never going to lose media with this combination. 
Well, I mean, you bring up a great point, being redundancy, right? So I'm on jobs sometimes where it's potentially a little sketchy. I might be around people that don't want me to be there because, you know, for whatever reason, I'm doing a documentary. Yeah. And uh, having knowing that I have H.265 proxies in the cloud means at least I have some footage if memory cards get taken. True story, I'm afraid. Yeah. Anyway, so redundancy is good. Yep. And you have triple redundancy in the cloud, so never going to be a problem. You're right, triple redundancy. Well, JP, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. All right, thanks, Graham.